And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today I'm taking a look at Trajan. Trajan is designed by Stefan Feld, who is the current darling of the Eurogame universe, and he's certainly producing an output of games that has really been amazing to people, especially since many of his games are quite heavy, involved, and very well lauded. This is probably his most uh, looked up to game came out um, actually about a, almost two, almost two years ago, but uh, it's only been out in English for about a year. But Trajan is a game. Uh, well, the back of the box says it's about the, the emperor, Roman Empire's big under its height of Trajan, and now it's your turn to seize the opportunity and rise to power. Woo! Well, kind of, sort of, something like that. Let's look. Does it look like there's a lot going on? Because there is. There's a lot going on in this game. There's stuff all over the place. And I'm not going to explain the game in super great detail because, well, that's not the point of this. It's to talk about the game and explain a little bit of how it works. But I do want to show you a few things. First of all is this. This is a, this is a really cool mechanic of this game. And it takes a, a page out of an older game, Mancala. And you have these tokens here, these action markers. And the action markers are different colors. And on your turn, you're going to pick up one group of those from one cup, so to speak. And you're going to move it that many spaces. So I grab these two, I would go one. And each time I go by a space, I drop those action markers off. The last space I go to is going to show the action that I'm going to take place in. So for example, here I would take place in construction or building because it was the last one I dropped it off in. Also, if you end at one of these tiles, you'll start the game with some of these. These are Trajan tiles, the bonus tiles, and I have colors that match what's shown there. So for example, if I had blue and green here, I would be able to use this tile, which would give me points and give me a bonus action that I can take. In fact, in the very first turn of the game, I could pull that off. If I had not moved those, I could have done this. One, two, and you see there's a green and white, and I would have been able to use this tile, which would give me a bonus double action. Now, each of these actions is going to uh, cause turn order to, I mean, the, the game flow to go. This is going to be moving around this track here in a four player, three player, two player game. And you'll be moving around this track based on how many spaces you moved on your own board. And every time it passes here, uh, part of the year goes by. And uh, we, you know, it's kind of a way to keep track of when the game is going to end or when scoring is going to happen. Now, the different actions that you can take, there's so many different things. You can take more Trajan tiles and add them to your board. Uh, so I would move this here and add another tile. Which get the more of these tiles on my board, the more of a chance I have to get things. You can uh, take commodities, go to sea, draw cards either from the top of the deck or from these two discard piles. You have all different sorts of commodities. Or you could ship those commodities. You can go over here and you can ship commodities that are the same or commodities that are different. So let's say, for example, I ship four different commodities that are different, and then I would get eight points. Everything in this game gives you points. I can go over here, and I can send some of my little dudes up here and uh, for actions, and they will then become workers who will then be able to go into spots on the board here, take those tiles, and not only will I be able to use those tiles for other things as the game progresses, but they also, as you can see, give you points. Or I could send those little workers up here to help my general. Or I could use my general to go into regions and take tiles that will give me, again, bonuses and uh, different things. And if I can move my soldiers into those regions, I will get the points of the different regions. And you can see the regions that are farther away are worth more points. Or I can just go down here and take tiles. Some of these tiles are needs that the people are wanting. You know, they might want bread, they might want to see some combat, they might care about piety, or they might give me extra action tiles later on. Or I might just go down here and try to advance my token and get votes in the Senate and points. 
And so whew, there's a lot going on and there's a lot of places that you can send your workers. And if you notice, pretty much everywhere you send them, you're getting points somehow. You get points for these, points for these, points from here, uh, points down here. At the end of each round, you will have a vote. And so players will use how far they got in here, plus any bonus vote tiles that they have uh, to take bonus tiles. At the end of the game, these bonus tiles will score. Here you get three points for every bonus tile. Second most votes gets the other bonus tile, but they flip it to the other side, so it's not worth as much. So I'd get two for every uh, fruit or grape resource I have at the end of the game and two for every fish resource card. So there's all sorts of bonus cards. And also, after rounds, you're going to find that the, the people are going to be demanding different goods. So here they want one of each. And you need to have those or you'll lose points. Whew. There, that is totally not a good overview of the game. It, uh, I'm sorry, it's not a bad overview, I hope, but it's not a comprehensive overview. There's a lot of different things that you'll be doing, but essentially, it all focuses around this board here as you move those and try to get the best actions, and then you got to go over here and say, how can I get the most points? Well, I use these shippings to get quick, fast, easy points, or down here, votes, so that in the long term, I'll get better bonus tiles, or will I go over here and try to get, a, I mean, there's a lot of points available here, or will I go down here and get the tiles I need so I don't lose points, or go up here. There's really no place that you can concentrate on. There's just a lot going on, a lot of pieces on the board, but essentially you're taking actions to get you points and then at the end of the game adding in a whole bunch of bonus points and obviously whoever has the most points is the winner. Once again, I'd like to reiterate that that was just a very general overview of the rules. Um, so if I didn't mention every little rule and I didn't even come close to mentioning every little rule, please forgive me. Uh, of course, people only yell when I miss a rule if I don't like the game and in this case, I actually do like it, which was surprising, especially to me. If you you guys have watched a lot of my reviews, you know that I'm not a big fan of games that don't have theme. And Trajan does not have theme. Nothing. Zero. Zilch. Less than nothing. You can say anything you want to me about how it's about expanding your empire. Blah bitty blue blah blue. All you're doing in this game is getting victory points through various ways. So if that's the case, and I usually kind of stomp on these games like that, why? I think because I, the main mechanic I just enjoyed that much. The main mechanic, that Mancala thing where you move around, is very intriguing to me because not only are you trying to figure out, I'm going to move here, and the next turn that will let me move there to here, and that will let me move here to here, but you're also looking at the colors, trying to get those bonus tiles. In fact, I would sometimes ignore what my fellow players are doing just to look at my own board. Hmm. Now that could be a negative to the game, I guess, because it does kind of get crunchy thinking about that. But the game itself, there's so much going on in this. This is a game that the very first time you play it, you are not going to get, unless you are some brilliant person. You're just not going to get it until maybe the end of the game, you'll be like, oh. And the second game, you still might not get it, because I like this game because everything is interconnected. I can go here to get bonus tiles that will help me over here, which will give me uh, more, uh, more votes over here, which gives me the bonus tile because of the things I've been doing up here. And it's, it's, it's one of the most interconnected games I know. But if I may say something that's somewhat negative, and again, remember, I like the game, but Trajan for me is difficult because it has a lack of focus or at least a lack of obvious focus. Let's say another, another heavyweight game that I'm re-reviewing this week, Lahab. I really like Lahab. In Lahab, the focus is build ships, build big buildings that are worth points, and also feed your, peop feed your people every turn. Okay, that's a focus. In Trajan, I don't have that focus. My focus is have a lot of points at the end of the game. But I don't really know what the best way to get a lot of points are. Even if I start pursuing one of these specific strategies, I don't know if that strategy is really the one I should be taking at the time. I don't know when I should switch. And you say, well, that's something you learn as playing. Yes, and that's something I need to emphasize here. Trajan is not a game you'll play one or two times and get it. It's a t game I think you could play 10 or more times and still not catch all the intricacies that are involved in it. And because of that, that's gonna make some people absolutely love the game, and I like it. Now, for me, I'm sitting there and going, okay, here I can take two things that are worth five points. That's one wor worth nine. That's four and a bonus tile. Oh, uh, I don't really, I don't, okay, I'll do this one. And I kind of just go with the flow because I just pick different things. I mean, I'm trying to be strategic about it, but you know, if everybody's up in the exploration area, maybe I should get out and go down to the voting area. And if, if I, I'm in this area and people aren't doing much there, should I pursue it all the way to the core? Do I need to make sure I have that bread and circuses stuff so that the people don't lose points every turn and that's looming over you? So it's very interesting. The setup, is, there's a lot of setup and there's a lot of takedown, uh, but overall, it's a very solid design. I am not a failed maniac. Uh, I do not think everything he does is great, although Castles of Burgundy is one game I like very much. 
This is another one. I think it's a great game, but I will not lie and tell you there's theme because there is none. I will not lie and tell you that it's simple because it's not, but there is a lot of people who this will be a fantastic game for because there is so much involved in the game and the game will involve you in, in a sense of mind calculations and just so much to do. I think that for that reason, it's good. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find the latest board game news at Dicetowernews.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Fun Again Games, the world's best game source. Fun Again Games has over 5,000 games available. Check them out at funagain.com. Shut the door! Yeah. Yeah.